Alright guys, uh, I'm excited about this one. This is my first builder that I'm going to be putting online. Alright, so we are running Breton on this one. We have the Apprentice, okay, for spell damage. Uh, in a group setting, we're going to be running Witch's Mother, Potent Brew. In a solo setting, it'd probably be better to run Bewitch Sugar Skulls, okay, because that gives us a little bit of health recovery. Okay, the Witch's Mother gives us magic recovery, max health, max magicka. We're going to be running the tripod. Okay, you can either use the crown tripod or you can use the. I think I have one here. Yeah, I guess I don't. Um, yeah, either the crown tripod or the essence of health tripod that also gives the same uh, magicka, stamina, and health recovery. All right. So let's take a look at the build first here that we have. All right, so for our first group, we're going to be using Overwhelming. All right, and I have on the front bar, I'm using Precise with the Flame Enchantment. On the back bar, I'm using an Infused with the Weapon it, uh damage spell enchantment that will increase the damage and weapon enchantment, whatever it is. Okay, for the body, we're using, we're using Mother Sorrow, all divines. Okay. Okay, now the jewelry is still always the overwhelming, but on the neck, we're using Magicka Recovery with Arcane. And both rings are spell damage enchantment arcane you can you know, use bloodthirsty here if you want all right for our helm and our shoulders we are using vulcan scora okay i have the prismatic put on it so we're getting magic of health and stamina okay these are also divines now you can run just straight uh magic here you can run the max magic enchantment here not a problem. I just find sometimes I just need just a little extra stamina, maybe to block or something. So it does help out a little bit. All right now, I do have three staffs for this. Okay, so I have two flame staffs that I normally use, and then I also have a lightning staff. Okay, this is more for when I'm soloing. Here, um, I have a hardened enchantment on it, and it's also infused. Right, so it gives me a little more protection. I put it on the front bar. Gives me a little more protection when I am soloing by myself. All right, so let's go over the skills that we're going to be using. All right, so the front bar, we're using Necrotic Orb. Okay, will be our first skill. And that comes from the Undaunted skill line. Mystic Orb, sorry, not Necrotic Orb, Mystic Orb. Okay, this is an AOE, and it gives us Magicka damage every half second, almost 1,200 Magicka damage every half second. Okay, it also gives us Combustion, so if we're running in a group, uh, the synergy com they can use the Synergy Combustion. Okay, the next one we are using is going to be from the Adriac Spear line. We're going to be using Puncturing Sweeps. Okay, this kind of works out as our healing also. So we don't have to run, we don't have to fill up our bar with other stuff that we don't need. Right, because each strike of this heals us for 40% of the damage. Okay, this also uh, is an AoE. So when you strike the main guy, the person that you're aiming for, it also it gives magical damage to the other people. So it's a good one. All right, the next one we're using is Blazing Spear. Okay, this one also helps out when you're in a group with Blessed Shards. Okay, restoring 3,960 magic or stamina, whichever maximum is higher. 
Okay, so we send the spear to the heavens, bring down a shower of divine wrath, dealing 8,146 magic damage to enemies in the area, and additionally 129 damage every one second for 10 seconds. Okay, so this is a another AoE. The next one we are going to be using comes from the destruction staff line, unstable wall of elements. Okay, create an unstable element barrier in front of you, dealing 846 magic damage to enemies in the target area every one second before exploding for an additional 6,787 magic damage. Unstable wall of fire deals an additional, sorry, we're not using fire, we are using, oh uh, yeah, we are more likely you'll be using fire if you use the staff. Unstable wall of fire deals an additional damage to burning enemies, and if you use the, the, Uh, lightning Staff, uh, Stable Wall of Storm sets concussed enemies off balance. Okay, I usually stick to the Flame Staff uh, more often than not. Okay, the next one we are going to be is from the oops, Dawn's Wrath. Okay, this is Solar Barrage. Okay, 2,217 magic damage every two seconds for 10 seconds. And uh, this also gives us Empower. So while this is on and we light attack, our light attacks are 40% stronger, okay? They more damage, right? So our ultimate in this set here, and I'm using it mainly f just because there's a passive ability that I wanted to get with this, Shooting Star, okay? Call a Comet Down that deals 1,500 15,336 flame damage to enemies in the area, knocking them down and stunning them for two seconds. Okay, then it becomes AOE. 4,472 flame damage every one second for 13 seconds. You generate 12 ultimate each enemy hit in the initial blast. So if you drop this in a big group, okay, so it'll it'll target one, but then it'll hit in the other guys in the group you get 12 ultimate for each person hit. So if there's five guys there, you're gonna pick up 60 ultimate just by dropping this. Okay, and the passive um, that we get from this that I'm making sure is increase your max magicka, mag magicka recover by 2% for each mage's guild, guild ability slotted. Okay, so we have two here. And I switch it over, we have two here, 2%. Okay. So it's this one here, Degeneration. Okay, the next ability on the back bar, we are gonna be using Vampire's Bane. Oh, I'm stuck on the bar, there it is. Uh, Vampire's Bane, which is in Dawn's Wrath. Blast a mini enemy with a charge of radiant heat, dealing 4,379 damage, an additional 14,768 flame damage over 16 seconds. Upon activation, you gain Major Prophecy, increasing your spell critical rating by 2,191. Okay, so this gives us Major Prophecy, uh, prophecy here. Okay, the next one we're going to be using is Degeneration. This is in the Mages skill line. Okay, bind an enemy with Chaotic Magic, dealing 15,652 damage over 12 seconds. Okay, this one also gives us major sorcery, increasing your spell damage by 20% for 24 seconds. Okay, Elemental Drain, that comes from the Destruction Staff skill line. Oh. Destruction Staff skill line. Send the elements to sap an enemy's defense and afflict them with major breach for 22 seconds, reducing their spell resistance. Also applies minor Magic Steel for 22 seconds, restoring 300 magic every one second when damaging them. Okay, so you have to be actively damaging them to get this, but not a problem. All right, the next one we're gonna be using is from the Fighters Guild. We're using Trap Beast. Okay, set a sharpened blade trap at a location, which takes 1.5 seconds to arm and lasts for one minute. When triggered, the trap deals 1,500 physical damage, an additional 3,425 physical damage over 10 seconds, and grants you minor force, increasing your critical damage by 10% of the duration. Okay, so this gives us minor force. On top of that, 
So if we look at the skills here, we have minor force. Okay, this one is major breach, major sorcery, and major prophecy. Okay, and the last thing we have is harness magica. This is a shield. Uh, that comes from the light armor skill line. Okay, convert a portion of your ma magica into a protective ward, gaining a damage shield that absorbs 8,777 damage for six seconds. Uh, damage shield strength capped at 50% of your max health. So this is base on your max health. While active, whenever you uh, shield absorbs damage, you restore 1, 000, or 183 magicka. Each piece of light armor worn increases the magicka restored by 33%. This effect can occur up to three times. Okay, so this is our shield that restores magicka. If we look back here in our Our overwhelming set, that's what it does also. It restores magicka. Okay, so 50% of the damage you deal this way restores you as magicka. This effect can occur every six seconds. Okay, so this creates a whirlwind that goes around uh, a torrent that deals 1,083 shock damage to enemies. Okay, so let's go back to our skills. Okay, and our last skill it's going to be from the Destruction Staff line. It is Elemental Rage. Okay, depending on if you have which staff you have. Okay, so create a catal Cataclysmic Storm targeted, look, a target at the target location that builds for two seconds and lays waste to all enemies in the area, dealing 8,184 magic damage every one second for seven seconds. Okay, so let's trade out the staff. Okay, Fiery Rage increases damage by 15% and Thunderous Rage includes, uh, increases the duration by 2 seconds. I changed out the staff because I want to look at the Unstable Wall of Fire. Okay, because that's what we're going to be using most of the time is the one there. Okay, so we have Mystic Orb, which... Yeah, we already did that, sorry. I changed out the staff so I could show you what Unstable Wall of Fire does. Okay, slam your staff down to create an unstable flaming barrier in front of you, dealing 1,150 damage to enemies every one second. Burning enemies take 20% more damage from this ability. When the effect ends, the barrier explodes, dealing 6,402 flame damage. All right, so let's take a look at the passives. Okay, the Adric Spear, we're using all the passive there. Okay, so the first one increases our critical damage. The second one gives us minor protection. The third one gives us 25% chance to deal an additional additional damage or possibly magic damage, whichever is higher. And the last one, sorry, increase your weapon damage by 6% and spell resistance by 2,640. Okay, Dawn's Wrath. Again, we're getting all of those. Enduring Rays, increase the duration of Sunfire Eclipse, Solar Flare, and Nova abilities. Prism, casting a Dawn's Wrath ability generates three ultimates. Can occur every six seconds. Casting a Dawn's Wrath ability grants minor sorcery to you and your group for 20 seconds, increasing your spell damage by 10%. Now, we already have a major sorcery there. I believe it's this one here. Yeah, so you can put major and minor sorcery together. Um, restoring spirit, reduce the health, magic, and stamina, ultimate cost of your abilities by 5%. Okay, so that saves us. Okay, the last one. You don't really need anything in this one. Uh, these are all restoring light abilities. Um... This one here, Master Ritualist, you can get. Uh, this one is good for a group because it increases the resurrection speed. Resurrects allies, uh, resurrect allies c return with 100% more health. Gives you a 50% chance to fill an empty soul gem after each successful resurrection. 
Okay, the reason these are all marked is because sometimes I use channel focus and we'll go over that in just a moment. Okay, destruction staff. Try focus, okay. Fully charged flame staff deals an extra 12%. And the shock staff, heavy attacks, damage nearby enemies for 100% of the damage done. Penetrating magic, your destruction staff abilities ignore 10% of en enemy spell resistance. Elemental force, increase your chance to apply burning, concussion, chilled status effects by 100. Okay, the burning could come from the, the fire staff and the concussion will come from the um, lightning staff. Okay, ancient knowledge. Equipping a flame staff increases your damage done with single target abilities and equipping a lightning staff increases your damage done with area of effect abilities. Okay, so it, the lightning staff is good for groups and the flame staff is good for single target. Destruction ex expert, when you kill an enemy with a destruction staff ability, you restore 3600 magicka. Okay, light armor, we have all of these. Okay, grace uh, re reduces expect the effectiveness of, stare, uh, of snare, sorry. Um, also reduces the cost of sprint by 3% for each piece of light arm armor worn. Uh, evocation, increase your magicka recovery for each type of, uh, for each piece of light equipment worn and reduces the magicka cost of your abilities by 2% for each piece of light armor equipped. Spell wording, increase your spell resistance by 363 for each piece of light armor. Prodigy, increase your spell critical rating by 2,191. Concentration, increase your spell penetration. Okay, medium armor. Uh, due to the fact that this does have, we have one medium and one light on this. It uh, doesn't matter which order you do it. I have the head is medium and the shoulders are heavy. You could do head heavy, shoulders medium, your choice. Okay, we have dexterity, which increases your weapon critical by 328. Windwalker increases your stamina recovery by 4% for uh, per piece of medium armor and reduces the stamina cost of your abilities by 2% per piece of medium armor equipped. Athletics, uh, this increases your movement speed and reduces the cost of roll dodge. Heavy armor, we are also using resolve, which increases your physical and spell resistance by 362 for each piece equipped. Constitution, increase your health recovery by 4% for each piece of heavy armor. And you also restore 108 magic and stamina when you take damage for each piece of heavy armor. This effect can occur, uh, occur every four seconds. Juggernaut increases your max health by 2% for each piece of heavy armor. Okay, we do have, I am using a vampire. It is not necessary on this build, but if you do get a vampire, we want the supernatural recovery. That's the main reason we have this Okay, so you have to be Vampire Stage 2 or higher. You'll increase your Magicka and Stamina Recovery by 10%. Undeath reduces the damage taken by up to 33% based on your missing health, while you are below 50% health. And Unnatural Resistance reduces the severity of health recovery determined in Vampirism between Stages 2 through 4. Fighter's Guild. We have Banish the Wicked. Now you could put Summon Slayer um, right here. I probably should do that, uh, but you could put it in Slayer because this, you do have one item that is there. Uh, we're using the Trap Beast. Okay. And then Banish the Wicked, will you generate nine ultimate when you kill Undead, Daedra, or Werewolf? Okay, the Mage's Guild. We want all these. Mage Adept, reduce the magicka and health cost of your Mage's Guild abilities by 15%. Everlasting Magic increases the duration of your Mage's Guild abilities by 
increase your max magicka and magicka recovery by 2% for each of the gate uh, major skill ability slotted due to the fact that we have one on each bar okay we always have a 2% and then might of the guild casting a major's ability grants you empower increasing damage or night uh, your next light attack okay but we already have that on um, on solar barrage here okay so if you don't want to put anything into that one you don't have to okay it's the same thing uh, this is only for five seconds but solar barrage is while solar barrage is on and that is a 10 second so it gives you actually more time okay sigic order or uh, sorry yeah sigic order I'll come back to this one here in just a moment undaunted uh, we have mystic orb Okay, so we're going to use Undaunted Command. When you activate an ally synergy, restore 4% of your max health, stamina, or magicka. Undaunted Metal, increase your max health, stamina, and magicka by 2% for each type of armor. Since we're using all three, all three types of armor, we have a current bonus of 6. Okay, we are Breton, as said before, so we want all of these. Increase your experience and gain with light armor skill line by 15%. Increase your allow, uh, alliance points gained by 1%. Increase your max magicka by 2,000 for the gift of Magnus. Spell attunement. Increase your spell resistance by 2,310. This effect is double if you are effective, uh, afflicted by burning, chilled, or concussed. Increase your magicka recovery by 100. Magic, magicka mastery reduces the magic cost of your abilities by 7%. We do also have alchemy. Okay, we need medicinal use in this. So you, once you get it leveled up, you can get rid of the skill points. I recommend you keep it. That way you can create your own potions. Okay, uh, chemistry produces three potions or 12 extra poisons per crafting attempt. So that means you create four. Every one you make, you actually create four. So you actually will save yourself a lot of, uh, lot of materials here. Uh, laboratory use, these aren't important unless you're actually going to create your own. Uh, if you're going to create your own, try to get everything on the list so it's not a problem. If you're going to buy from the guild store, just make sure you have medicinal use. Medicinal use, when using the potion, results ef uh, effects last 30% longer. So that means a regular potion starts out at like, uh, I don't remember, 25 seconds. By the time you're done, that potion can be used, I believe it's 47, 47 seconds here. Uh, that one's 28, because that's not a good one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 47.3 seconds on the tri tripods. Okay, so that actually has a 45 second cooldown on the potion. So if you start out on a potion and you only have like 25 seconds, then you're waiting for a 20 second cooldown before you can use it again. But this way you can use the potion immediately after it runs out. You don't have to wait. All right, uh, where were we? Okay, alchemy, provisioning. Um, if you're gonna create your own uh, recipes and not buy them in the store, I recommend that you get everything. Uh, but the biggest ones here are gourmand, because this adds 20 minutes to the duration of your food. Connoisseur is 20 minutes to the duration of any consumed drink. So even if you buy them in the guild store, you still want these two. Uh, if you are going to craft your own chef and brewer, make sure you get those also. All right, so some changes we can make to this bar. If you find that you want to do a couple changes here. Uh, if you find that you're going to solo a lot, your setup probably should be a little more like this. Okay, so on our main hand, we're going to switch out to the thunder, the lightning staff. Okay, our skills. We're probably going to change this here, trap beast. Okay, we're going to take that to channeled acceleration. Now the reason we're going to change this to channeled acceleration is because this will give us an extra shield. So if I put on channel, um, channeled acceleration, it gives us right here minor force for 36 seconds. 
Okay, over here on the right, Trap Beast gives us Minor Force, okay, for 10 seconds. But it does do physical damage. Channeled Acceleration does not. But by applying Channeled Acceleration, we get also a shield, okay, if we put in it in Consecrated Barrier. Concent concentrated barrier, sorry, in concentrated barrier. So if we put two skill points into this, we will get a shield, a free shield that we can use. So when you're soloing, that is huge. So when you're soloing with this character, we now have three shields. We have the shield on the front bar, okay, that grants a 4,050 point damage shield. We have a skill that is a shield. Okay, Harness Magica. Yeah, that's three. Okay, that's three shields. So we have three shields on this. Okay, one other thing that you might want to trade out, you could, if you find that you really need health for some reason, due to the fact that we have the puncturing sweeps you really don't need a help but if you find that you do you could trade elemental drain and you could put on under restoring light honor the dead okay this will help out a little bit if you wanted to also you could use channeled focus Okay, which would help, it kind of acts as a shield. It, it increases your physical resistance and spell resistance by 5,280. Okay, and you also recover 240 magicka every one second. Okay, so this kind of acts as a shield, but I don't think it's really necessary because we already have the other shields. If you find that you're missing a little bit of magicka or you're having a couple problems with maybe stamina or health, you could use Radiant Aura in this. But the problem is, is you kind of need to put that also on the front bar. And I really don't think I would take anything out um, out of the front bar. Maybe you could take out Mystic Aura or, or something, but I really wouldn't do that. Putting on the back bar, you have to activate it, and this will steal Magicka around. But if you're trying to get the Minor Fortitude, Minor Endurance, and Minor Intellect, you probably need to put it on both bars. All right, I think that is it for the skills. All right, so let's go over the champion points. All right, starting with the green first. We have Warlord 61, Sprinter 11, Tenacity 27, Arcanist 75, Tumbling 48, Shadow Ward 48 in the shadow. Okay, the Apprentice, we have 72. Elemental expert in 60 elemental expert 64 staff expert we have three mastered arms we have 56 thaumaturge we have 75 now this doesn't hit our jump points properly but I wanted to get the exploiter because this will increase the damage done against the off balance enemies by 10 percent okay in the in the steed we are Ironclad 56, 34 Spell Shield. I think this could actually come down. Uh, I will have to look into the um, quantity of spell resistance that I have on this character, but this probably could take some out of here and maybe add them to Ironclad, or you could put maybe into Hardy, Elemental, Defender, or Thick Skinned, a couple extras. Um, but that's something I'm gonna look at into the future. All right, so the next one we have 49 into Hardy, 49 Elemental Defender, Thick Skinned we have 48, then we have 34 in Bastion. This is for our shields when we're soloing. Uh, by putting them in here, I didn't really see a huge difference in when I when I solo by adding them there. Um, I did originally have more in Ironclad, but due to the fact that I have the extra shields, it kind of makes up for the difference there. All right, so under character, okay, these are our numbers here. 
Uh, this is the front bar. Okay, switch out to the back bar. Okay, so this is a back bar. So if we put out all of our buffs here. Get everything out. Okay. That's the uh, back bar. Our front bar. That is the back bar. And this is the front bar. Okay, so we do have a lot of spell damage. Spell criticals well over 50. So we do have a lot of strength here. All right, and the rotation. Let's talk about the rotation here. The rotation is pretty simple. It's not too complicated. We're just going to go straight down the line, okay? As you can see the bar at the bottom, okay? So I wouldn't go exactly straight down the line, but what I would do is start with Elemental Drain, then do Channeled Acceleration, Degeneration, and Vampire's Bane. Okay, do those first. Then we come over here, and this one we're going to go directly down the line. Okay, so we're going to Light Attack, Mystic Orb, Light Attack, Puncturing Sweeps, Light Attack, Blazing Spear, Light Attack, Unstable Wall, Light Attack, Solar Barrage. Okay, and then we're also going to do an extra Puncturing Sweeps, maybe two, depending on your speed. So it'll be Light Attack, Puncturing Sweeps, then Light Attack, Mystic Orb. Then we're going to switch bar again. Okay, this time we're only going to do Vampire's Bane and Degeneration. Then we're going to switch, and we're going to do all of these again. Then this one once or twice, depending on your speed. Then this one. Then we're going to switch, and we're going to do all of these. Then we'll go back to the rotation. So every second rotation, you need to do elemental drain and channeled acceleration. If you're not going to, if you're going to use. Um, Give me one second. All right. Trap Beast. Okay, you can do that one every rotation, and that's normally what I do. I usually do it every rotation. Technically, you can do Elemental Drain every single rotation because it does not cost you anything. So if it is more comfortable to add this to the rotation every single time, go ahead and use it. It'll make it a little bit easier on the rotation. So if you're using Trap Beast, we're going to do all four of them. Okay, so light attack, light attack, skill, light attack, light attack, and in between. Then we're going to do light attack, puncturing seeps, light attack, blazing spear, light attack, unstable wall, light attack, solar barrage, two puncturing sweeps, then light attack, mystic orb, switch bar, and do all these again. Okay, so make sure you put a light attack. Okay, so if I'm going to weave this, I'm going to light attack, X, light attack, light attack, light attack. Okay. As you can see, there we go. So we just light attack in between each one. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it. Okay, remember, channeled acceleration. Uh, to use that if you need the extra shield. If not, go straight with this one. Trap Beast. Alright guys, that's it for this build. Uh, I hope you like it, and I'm going to leave you with a couple boss fights that they're there at the end. Um, if you like the build, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, if you have some ideas to make it even stronger, please also let me know in the comment section. And don't forget to hit, hit the subscribe button so I can keep the channel up. And that's it. I will see you in the next video.